Well, you eventually rose through the ranks of Newmont Australia to become chairman and managing director. Mm. Um, and therefore, you learned a lot about doing business in Australasia. And is there anything you'd like to add about uh, doing business in that part of the world, in the Southwest Pacific? Well, I think one of the challenges that you always encounter when you move out of your own cultural environment is to be very sensitive to the fact that you're somewhere else, you're in somebody else's backyard, and where other people have different expectations, they have different beliefs, they have different social mores and customs, and recognising that the minute you step into somebody else's backyard, you need to be very careful that you understand how their backyard is different from your backyard, how the, the, the business behaviour, the way in which you uh, believe in the rule of law um, is interpreted when you step into environments where, yes, there's a rule of law, but it's interpreted in some cases quite differently. Um, you know, one of the, the real challenges for explorers anywhere in the third world is how you deal with um, an expectation on the part of people that are helping you or providing you with a service um, with their expectation that you will reward them for services rendered. And understanding the fine line between uh, the payment for services rendered in the official line of duty and, and discriminating payments that are being requested for work that might not be part of the official line of duty is a, is a delicate area for people that are managing any kind of business activity in different cultural environments. And we were always asked, how did we get on in places in Southeast Asia where there was an expectation that things could be done differently or more quickly or uh, more favourably if certain facilities and services were rendered. Um, and one of the challenges for anybody operating in that sort of environment is to understand how you're going to conduct your business. We said to our guys right at the beginning, uh, you have to assume you're going to be successful. You have to assume that you're going to be running some kind of a mining operation here and you have to then make sure that you know what sort of an operation that's going to look like and you have to be sure that you start out how you intend to finish up. So that if you're being asked to do something that you would not do in your home country or if you're being asked for some kind of remuneration or reward for the providing a service that you would not pay for or, or expect to be provided in your home country, you better find a way of saying no. And you better find a way of saying, saying no as diplomatically and politely as you can. So I used to say to my guys, here's the deal. We, are, we all work for an American company, wh whichever part of Asia Pacific area you might be, and uh, American legislation, uh, there are all kinds of rules governing what you can do and what you can't do. So here's an explanation of what you can do, and here's a very explicit explanation of what you can't do. You may not induce or make payments to induce any kind of behaviour that the person that you are expecting to help you with would not ordinarily expect to get paid for in his, own, his or her own home country. And the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act governed what Americans and American employees or employees of American companies could and couldn't do. So it was nice to be able to say to our people, here are the rules that we're obliged to work under. Um, but on top of that, you, you had to maintain a relationship with the people that you're working with. You had to be able to operate and still have courteous and cordial relationships with people at the village level and the town level and the provincial level, um, and at the same time not get you know, caught up in, in um, illicit behaviour that would have been um, not allowed under the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act. So I used to say to my guys, um, we used to adopt the, the, the Nancy Reagan credo, just say no. So I would say to people, the easiest way to diminish people's expectations, the easiest way for you to start out how you mean to finish up, is when you're asked for something 
that you know you're never going to be able to say yes to is just saying no. But let me make it easier for you. I said, you can blame it on a crazy guy in Jakarta. That's me. So if you get asked for something that you know you're going to say no to, um, say, I'll have to ask my boss in Jakarta. Wait two days and then go back to him and say, no, my boss in Jakarta says, says no. no. So you can keep your personal relationship with the local guys and you can both turn around and blame that yeah. person in Jakarta for being such a you know, culturally unaware person. So we developed over a period of time a policy of saying no, no, hell no. Um, for people that are being naughty and or would be naughty, it gets to be a little bit of a stretch to keep asking for something when you've been told no with a smile on your face repetitively. And what we found was that in most of these communities, the number of people that would be asking for something that they really shouldn't ask for was a relatively small percentage. There were mostly good, straightforward, honest people who wanted to see what we were doing succeed. Hmm. And they were as embarrassed as anyone about when they learned that people were twisting our arms for certain things. So that was quite heartening for our guys. And then we realised that, you know, actually just saying no worked just fine. Yeah.